Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna finish working on our deseasonalization um, and detrending of data. Because what we're doing here is we're trying to make a forecast out into the future when we have data that has trends and seasonality. And to top it off, we need a forecast that's a few weeks in advance. And we haven't really learned how to do that yet. So let's tackle one method to do that. We were able to get the trend out of the data. Um, and how we did that was essentially by removing the increase due to the linear time trend that we saw. So we calculated our slope, 5,833, right? That's the slope of the line in the pre-intervention period. Because if, if the intervention slowed down legitimate deliveries, we don't want to have our growth estimate biased by that. And then for each period, we basically removed mx, right? m is the slope and x is the t. So we removed the anticipated growth from period to period due to the trend line created by linear regression through the pre-intervention data. If you've seen that I have another tab down here and you're saying, what has she done? I just made a copy of the raw data so that I have it in case I make a mistake. Okay, so next what we've got to do is tackle these predictable rise and falls due to the day-to-day, -day, expected day-to-day -day variation in the delivery, food delivery business and the quantity of deliveries. So I'm gonna add myself two columns here because what I need is I need a couple day of week measures, day of week number, and then I just want day of week. I'm gonna make my day of week one a bit wider because I wanna fit a whole weekday name in there. The day of week one through seven, right? What day of the week is it? We'll give them all a number. Excel's really good at that. If you have a date that's entered and Excel knows that it's a date, we just need the weekday function. And actually, excuse the noise here, we've got uh, my husband's on the excavator. We've got concrete work doing. I've got a dog that's going to want in and out, so pardon. But the weekday function will transform any date, if Excel knows it's a date, into a number. And you just have to tell it what you want, Sunday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday. I was going to pick Monday through Sunday because it grouped the weekends toward the end. So I'm going for two there. It means one is Monday, two is Wednesday. So this is week day number two, so that's a Tuesday. I'll send this down so I get days of week for all of the data up through what we know. I haven't moved into the forecast period yet. And now I wanna translate that just into a weekday name. So I'm gonna use a relatively long nested if command. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the if, if this week number is equal to one, right, it's a Monday. And if it's not, I want it to ask again. I want it to go through and ask if it's Monday, okay, give me a one. If it's not, let's check if it's Tuesday. If it's Tuesday, tell me it's Tuesday. If not, check again. Is it Wednesday? If it's Wednesday, tell me Wednesday. If it's not, check again, right? So. If it's Monday, if the C2 is equal to one, tell me Monday. If not, ask again. Is C2 equal to Tuesday, uh, equal to two? If it is, tell me Tuesday. But if it's not, I want it to ask again. If C2 is equal to three, that means it's Wednesday. And the value is false. If it's false, I want it to ask again. If C2 is equal to four, that means it's Thursday. Well, let's see if it will, oh good, it's working. If it's not equal to that, if it's not equal to four, I want it to ask again. So if C3 is equal to five, tell me Friday. And if it's not equal to five, I want to ask again. <laughs> If C3 is equal to six, return Saturday. But at this point, I'm out of numbers. So if at this point we get this far and it 
isn't six. I just want it to tell me Sunday. And then I've got to close all the parentheses here. So I've got six if commands. I need six parentheses. And then I can hit enter. Aha, uh -huh. it's a Tuesday. And I see here, do you see how that C3 is lit? <laughs> I moved down a row. I need to make sure these all say C2. Because I only care about the row we're in. C2. So when we drag down, every row references only the weekday number of the row that we're in. Give yourself a double check, make sure it's only lighting up one column. Give yourself another couple of visual checks because we know that one is supposed to be Monday. Make sure that it worked. Great, it did work. I love that. Okay, so now, zooming out, we've got day of week, we've got a number, and we've got a day of week word for each day of the week. So now we're ready to move on. We've got to get a pivot table that shows us. We could do this with average if functions. A pivot table is just easy. I prefer it. And we're going to make a pivot table that tells us how the deliveries vary for each day of the week. And so we've already removed the trend, right? We've lowered the line to remove the expected linear growth. And now I want to remove the seasonal variation from that detrended line. So when I go to make a pivot table, I'm going to use my detrended deliveries to calculate the average de detrended delivery by day. So inserting a pivot table, it knows what, where the data is. I'm going to place it down here. Maybe we'll tidy up where we've placed all, param all our parameters at the end, but I'll say OK. And my pivot table fields function is going to come up. So I want to know average of those detrended deliveries by day of the week. So I'll take day of week into the rows. And then I'm going to take detrended deliveries and drag it into values. It volunteers some, which of course I don't want some. I want it to open this box. And I want to change it to average. Excuse the noise. Concrete happening, very exciting. And so this is average detrended deliveries by day of week, by day of we. And then What I want to do next is calculate an index, which basically tells me what percentage of average, right? This is the average detrended deliveries by day. So if we average all days, it would be 369,000 per day. Saturday has quite a lot more than that, so does Friday. Thursday has fewer deliveries than that, as does Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, and Sunday's another high day. So our busy days appear to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that they're the only ones with average daily deliveries that are greater than the weekly average by day. So to get a new column, or to get what I call an index, what Robert was referring to as a weight, I'm going to take detrended deliveries again and drag it into values. I'm not a fan of this sum business. Ooh, like the excavator, average, and then show data as percentage of column total. I don't really need it to be a percentage. Let's change this 
just to a number. And what this column tells us here is that Sundays are 1.33 times the daily average. Mondays are less, they're half the daily average, right? And you can see that because 180 is, you know, just under half of 369. Similarly, Saturdays are 1.84 times the daily average. And we can see that here, 679,000 is 1.8 times this average. So these numbers here, this index, we could call this, I call it a seasonal index, is the expected variation that we would see day by day. We expect Sundays to be higher, we expect Mondays to be lower. And if we want to remove this expected seasonal pattern from our detrended data, what we need to do is take our detrended data and divide it by these expected variations. So let's make some adjustments here. I'm not loving these big wide columns. These things can all wrap. And this section here could also more or less have some smaller font and that'll make it easier for us to deal with what we've got going on. Okay. So I want to get these indices up here. I've got deliveries, my blue line, my detended deliveries, my orange line. And now I want to calculate, I want to deseasonalize these data. I need two columns here. And I think you might have one here that says deseasonalize data. I want to have a column between detrended and deseasonalized that says index. And this column will contain the weekly index that we counted below. Our data starts on a Tuesday. So I'm going to move Monday. I'm sorry, I'm going to move Sunday and Monday to the bottom of this table just by highlighting, turning it into the hand and dragging it down. And now I've got my indexes in order. I'm just going to copy them. scroll back up to the top of my data set and insert them pasted special. You've got to paste special or else everything will not work. And I'm going to take values in number formatting because I already formatted them. And then I'm going to copy them and I'm just going to paste them all the way down, eyeballing each time that I'm starting on a Tuesday. And then I'm going to eyeball because Saturday is the biggest. I'm just going to make sure that I'm lined up right. This is our chance to not make a mistake. The top, I'm starting on a Tuesday, and my Saturday is 1.84. OK. So if I want to remove the seasonality from this detrended series, what I'm doing, my expectation is that Tuesdays are just over half of the average, the weekly average. So I'm going to take the detrended delivery for that particular Tuesday and divide it by the index. Since Tuesday is a low day, you divide it by half. You divide it not in half, but by 0.5. The deseasonalized number gets larger. It adjusts it upward to kind of unpenalize it for being a Tuesday. It's not its fault. And then we can drag this down. Let's pause here after this Saturday. And look what it's done to this Saturday's data. We divided it by 1.84, making it smaller, saying, OK, you know, I know you're Saturday, so you get 1.84 times the average. But if we remove that expected boost you would get from being a popular day, you know, it's 175,000. It actually is a pretty bad day, given that on average, we have 369,000 deliveries per day. That was a really bad Saturday. 322 less than we would have expected. So now I can drag this all the way down. And these are the numbers 
without the expected seasonal fluctuation added in. How do we know it worked? There's two places to take a look at this. The first one, actually, is we're gonna add that chart to our total deliveries. We're gonna click, we're gonna select data, we're gonna add a series that we're gonna call deseasonalization, deseasonalized, and the Y values for this are the entirety of our deseasonalized data. I'll say OK. Now I've got deliveries, detrended deliveries, and deseasonalized deliveries. I'm going to adjust the size of these lines so that they're 1.75. You can click on each of them sequentially, make them 1.75, and then they won't interfere with each other as much. And we can see now that in addition to removing what was an upward trend, we've smoothed out a lot of the peaks and valleys. Still, some Saturdays do appear to be better, and, and that's simply because we've got one Saturday that did so poorly that the inability of this one to contribute to making the Saturday average higher has left a little bit of Saturday bonus showing up for those Saturdays. But we can double check that it worked. And here's kind of the magic of this using this index. Go back down to your pivot table and click in it. You might have to right click because we want to see the, the um, field list. But we've got our average detrended deliveries by day of week. So I'm just going to call this detrended now that we know what we're talking about. Detrended average. And this is now detrended. Well, let's just keep calling it the index. That's fine. OK. So I want to add to this the next piece, which is it's not showing up yet. So we have to right click in our box and click refresh. And now we'll have our deseasonalized data. So now I want to take our deseasonalized data and drag it into our values and change it from sum to average. Okay, and then check this out. Deseasonalized. When we use our index to remove the expected seasonal variation in the data, we end up with a new column of data in which the average for each day of the week is equal. And so when we had one particularly bad Saturday, our index maybe isn't large enough to, to smooth and remove the peaks from those following Saturdays, but now, the average daily value in the deseasonalized data matches that of the detrended data, right? So on average, we have 369,850 deliveries per day. But now, when we've removed that expected variation, the average by day of week is the same. So we've removed that expected variation as predicted by the seasonal indices. We have gotten the trends out of the data. We have gotten this expected seasonal variation out of the data. And now we're going to do a forecasting method to see what we might expect the next handful of weeks to look like. OK, I'm going to pause here so that I, if I mess something up going forward, um, I don't have to start back from the beginning. OK, let's move on to forecasting. I'll see you in a second.